Well, praise the Lord. Give God all the glory and praise. Thank God for you visiting us today. I tell you, God is a really good God. We're going to have a great message today. We're going to talk about God's kingdom. And I tell you, boy, his kingdom to most people is mysterious because they can't see the kingdom. I mean, it's not like, you know, the kingdom over in London or, or these other people's kingdom where you can really see. But there is a kingdom that's here in the earth. All right. Well, anyway, I'm Pastor Andrew Alexander, the pastor of Healing Word Church in Bandera, Texas. And I tell you, I'm really glad that you joined us today. So let's take a moment of prayer, and then we're going to go into our message. All right. Father, forgive us of our sins and have mercy upon us, O Lord. Father, we ask that you would touch us, that you would encourage our heart, that you would open our eyes, that you would allow us to see your kingdom. And Lord, for those that are not in the kingdom, today, Lord, I ask that you would bring them into your kingdom. And Father, I ask that you would think through my mind and speak through my mouth and minister unto your people in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so today's message is the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of heaven and what it's like, you know. So we're going to talk about what it is like. Because a lot of people may not even know about God's kingdom. I mean, there's so many things in his kingdom. And when we become a child of the most high God, we enter into his kingdom. So everyone that gets saved enters the kingdom. All right. Unsaved or not in, in God's kingdom. So, uh, but you got to be saved to be in God's kingdom. So I got a lot of scriptures. What I want you to do is get your Bible together. And I got a lot of scriptures that I'm going to cover. They're like partial scriptures. So I want you to be ready. All right. The first one is John 3, 3 through 5. Okay. And this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus answered. Well, he's talking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a, that time he's a Pharisee. He's a ruler of the Jews, you know, and all this. And he was curious about Jesus. So it says in John 3 that he came to Jesus by night, you know, because he's trying to figure out. Who this Jesus is, but he didn't want to be shunned by his people. So he came to Jesus and he said unto him, <coughs> excuse me, verily, verily, I say unto thee, this is Jesus speaking, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus is giving some uh, standards here. He said, now, if, if, if you are not born again, there's no way that you can see this kingdom. And that's the way the unsaved is. The unsaved, they cannot see this kingdom of God because it's not revealed to them. This kingdom is a spiritual kingdom and only can be revealed through the Holy Spirit. So he's talking to Nicodemus. He said, you got to be born again. When you are born again, then you are able to see the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, going down to the fifth verse of 3 John, and Jesus answered, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, listen, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He has to be born of the water, be baptized, and be baptized in the Spirit. And that baptism uh, comes through the Holy Spirit. So he said, if you don't receive, be, uh, come through water and come through spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's saying that God is saying, you have to have my Holy Spirit. <laughs> or you can't enter into his kingdom. You know, that's so important. You know, people, there's a, uh, uh, should be a difference there. I know a lot of people, they come to church and, you know, and I know some churches may teach, well, you just get baptized, you know. And then you're a member of the church. But we got to enter the kingdom. You got to have God's spirit. You got to have his spirit. So in Luke 17 and 20 it says. Now having been asked by the Pharisees. Now they're talking to Jesus. When the kingdom of God would come. Okay. Now Jesus he replied to them. And he said the kingdom of God. Is not come with signs. Uh, to be observed. Okay. So he said, look, it's not going to be no sign that you can observe uh, with a with, with visible display, okay? Nor will people say, look, here it is, or there it is. Huh? 
For the kingdom of heaven is among you because of my presence. <laughs> All right. I mean, these people, they haven't, never, they haven't received anything yet. But he's telling them, the kingdom of God is right here among you because of my presence. Because Jesus was standing right there. Okay? So when Jesus leaves, the kingdom of heaven, it goes inside of us when we receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? So there is a kingdom there. And he's trying to explain to them. And Jesus was talking a lot about his kingdom and his father. All right? So we're going to look at some more examples of this kingdom. We're going to look at some small things right here, okay? Some small things. So in Matthew 13 and 24, it says, Another parable put he forth, talking about Jesus, unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. All right? So he's trying to give you an understanding of what the kingdom of heaven is like. He says, it's like a man who sowed good seed. Now, seed is something small, right? He sowed good seed into a field. Praise the Lord. And see, that's the way God's word is. It's not, it's not uh, great and, and big and everything. But when you hear the word, it comes to you as a seed. And the field he's talking about is the person. So it's a good man, a preacher, sowing seed into the people that will receive it. Because the, the field... Receive the seed, okay? It received the seed. Now, you got to receive this seed. And that's the way the kingdom of heaven works. It comes to you in seed form, okay? So let's move on. Matthew 13 and 31 says, and it's Jesus speaking, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain, something small, of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, right? So we know that the mustard seed is, is the, supposed to be the smallest seed of herbs, of herbs, or herbs, or how you say it. So it's the smallest seed, and but when you plant this, this herb, this mustard seed, it can grow up to be a giant tree. But it was small when it was planted. And that's the same thing like the word of God. When the seed come unto us and is planted un, unto us, if we take care of that seed, we will grow and be mighty in the land because the word of God is in us. The kingdom of God is present in us, okay? I mean, there's little bitty things. Let's look at one more. So Matthew 13 and 33 says, Another parable spake he unto them, okay? Now, you remember, Jesus spoke in parables. He didn't speak in plain English. He spoke in parables and stories that related to things. And he's doing these stories towards the kingdom of heaven. He's trying to give them a natural picture of what the spiritual kingdom is like. Right? So he spoke to them. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. Okay? We know what leaven is. Leaven is yeast. Right? Which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. Okay? So she took a little bit of leaven, put it in three measures of meal. To the whole was leaven. So she only put a little pinch of leaven. Any of y'all baking anything out there? You know you don't need a whole bunch of whole bunch of leaven to put in anything. A whole bunch of yeast, right? You only need just a little pinch. Put it in the dough. Uh, knead that dough. And then what you do is put it someplace warm. And I tell you what, that dough will grow. <laughs> it will multiply. And see, that's the way the kingdom of heaven is. When you put it in you... When you receive the kingdom of heaven in you, the Holy Spirit, it will grow and it will manifest. It will become bigger long as you nurture it. Okay? All right. Praise the Lord. So we're going to look at some other things. So we said that it was small. Now, we're going to talk about this great value because, see, this seed or the kingdom of heaven has great value. In Matthew 13 and 44, it says, again, talking about Jesus, <coughs> excuse me. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. The which, when a man hath found, hath found, he hideth for joy. Therefore goeth he and sell all that he hath and buy the field. Isn't that something? So he found something in there, a treasure. He found something in there, in that field, right? Gold, silver, whatever it is. You know, he found treasure in that field. Now, this thing, it was to him that was so precious that he would get rid of everything around him to purchase that. 
Now, that's the way that we should be. We should be that hungry for the word of God because God's word is so precious unto us. We should have this great desire for God's word to be in God's kingdom. I mean, this is the ultimate kingdom that you can be in. God's kingdom. Not the world's kingdom, you know. I mean, I've got a lot of kingdoms right here, but the ultimate kingdom is God's kingdom. And we should sell everything, give up all of the sin, all the stuff that we're doing to make sure we make it into this kingdom. Because what God have is precious to us. It's more than silver, it's more than gold, it's more than relationships, it's more than anything that you can imagine to be in this kingdom. And we should give up all to be in that kingdom. Woo, praise the Lord, I'm telling you. I mean, that's exciting, man. So let's look at Matthew 13 and 45. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. Okay? He's given another example. Now, he, he, they had merchants there. People go around and sold things and did things. Merchant man. Okay? Okay, so it, it, heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking a goodly pearl, who, when he had found uh, one pearl of great price. Now, he found just one pearl of great price. He went and sold all that he had and bought it. That's the same thing. Something small. You see that? A little pearl. One pearl. One little pearl. But that pearl must have been so, 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 so valuable. You know, that he said, look, I'm not going to tell nobody. I'm going to hide this thing. And I'm going to go and, and get everything I can to try to buy this thing. Because it had great value. And that's with the kingdom of heaven. It has great value. The Holy Spirit has great value. Jesus has great value. And, and, and all these things in God's kingdom has more value than you can ever imagine here on this earth. All right? So we should be desiring to get into the kingdom of heaven. All right? See, I'm telling you, the kingdom of heaven is worth anything that you can give in this whole life. Okay? Anything. Because its value is great. Its value is great. The kingdom of heaven, to get into the kingdom of heaven, I mean, that's to live eternally. That's to live forever. If you don't make it in, the only other option is uh, eternal damnation. I mean, come on, that is a choice. I mean, but you've got to really choose what you want. God gives you the right to choose. And he's placing something uh, before you of tremendous value. And what you've got to do is Sell everything you got to get that value. And I'm not talking about natural things, but I'm talking about spiritual things. All right. So Matthew 13 and 47 says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Now he's talking about fishing now. It says that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Okay. Now you got to understand this is available. This kingdom of heaven is available to all. It's available to everybody. Everybody can go into the kingdom of heaven. You can choose because God made it available. It's just like he, when it, this, we just talked about the net. The net was thrown and it gathered up a whole lot of fish, right? And now, now he's gathering up all these fish. So it's available to all. Let's go to the next verse, 48. It says, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered uh, the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Now, you got to understand, this is, the, this is the way it's going to be at the end. All right? You know, like I said, it's available to all, but not all will take the opportunity in their lifetime. And, and that's kind of a bad commentary. Because the call is out there. God is saying, come to me, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going, you can come into my kingdom. You can live in my kingdom. You can do all these things. And all you got to do is receive my son Jesus. But a lot of people won't take that opportunity. And they're going to miss being in the only kingdom that is eternal. Okay? This is the only one that's eternal. You'll live eternally in God's kingdom. Okay? So, so let's go on. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Okay? And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Oh my goodness. Listen, listen what else is it? Where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. He said that the angels in the end is going to separate because you didn't take the opportunity while you have breath in your body to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And they enter into God's kingdom. 
Now he's giving you all examples with the king light, and he's even showing you in the end, the angels are going to separate. The net is going to be thrown, and everybody's going to be gathered up, you know, and then they're going to sit and they're going to separate. God's going to separate the good from the bad. And the good is going to make it into heaven, but the bad is going to be cast into hell. It says, where there be wailing, crying, and gnashing of teeth because of so much pain that you're in. You have an opportunity to get into the kingdom of heaven. This is your opportunity today when you hear this message. At the end, you can receive. I will help you walk through to receive to get into the kingdom of heaven. So this is your opportunity today. All right. Well, praise the Lord. So let's go to the next verse. 51st verse says, And Jesus said unto them, Have you understood all these things? Talking to his disciples. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. So have you understood these things that I have talked to you uh, today? Amen. All right. So let's look at another one. So we're going to look at uh, judgment now. Okay. Even though that one's pretty much judgment, but we're going to look at judgment. Okay. What the kingdom of heaven is like because of judgment. <coughs> so let's go to Matthew, excuse me, 18 and 23. It says, therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain king. Okay. Now, he's referring to like God, the king, right, which took account of his servants, right? So this king, he took account of his servants. So God is going to judge every last one of us, all right, because God is the judge. And his, judge, and his judgment will measure how everyone handled Jesus. You got to understand that you can just push Jesus off, say, I don't want nothing to do with Jesus. You didn't handle Jesus right. Hand, Jesus is precious. <laughs> super precious so you didn't handle him right so you're going to be judged the way that you handle Jesus and you got to be very careful of that 24th verse says and when he had begun to reckon one was brought unto him which owed him listen a thousand talents that's like a lot of money y'all a thousand talents but for as much as he had not to pay the Lord commanded him to be sold, okay, to pay his debt, his wife, his children, and all that he had, okay, and the payment was to be made. You know, that's what's going to that's what's going to happen to this guy, right? See, he didn't use the gifts that was given unto him for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God, okay? Because God gives everybody gifts. You know, he was a hearer and not a doer. So God gave everybody, gives everybody these gifts. He gives everybody these talents that you can use for his kingdom. Right? But if you don't accept Jesus, if you don't accept him as Lord and Savior, you, that you would never know that you got these talents that's supposed to be used for the kingdom. And even some that are saved really don't know what talents they have to be used for the kingdom. That's something that they need to find out. You know, because God has something for everyone. And it, because they didn't do this, you know, there's going to be some type of judgment. 26 verse says, The servant therefore found to fell down. Now listen. He fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Okay? So he lent, you know, this, this man lent him all his money. He couldn't pay a 10,000 talents. Is, uh, man, astronomical amount. You know, he couldn't pay it back. He couldn't pay it back. You know, he said, Lord, have mercy. He worshipped him. Have mercy on me. Now, God is a, a merciful God. I want you to understand that. He knows that you're in the midst of your sin. And all you got to do is go and repent. Go to him and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And repent unto him. 27 verse says, Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him of his debts. Okay? That's all we got to do. We got to go repent. You know, we got to go repent. God is a forgiving God. When we ask him, and all that he have, have it, all that this guy had was not enough to pay his debt for his sin. But thank God for his forgiveness. You know, he's a forgiving God. He forgives us. If we had come to him and say, Lord, I did not treat Jesus the way that I was supposed to treat him. Lord, I ignored Jesus. I was doing my own thing. Lord, forgive me. God will forgive you of this. He will forgive you of your sins. Like I said, all is invited. God is not discriminatory. I understand. He makes the call to everybody in the world. And everybody has the opportunity 
to receive Jesus and come to, into his kingdom. Amen. He does not discriminate, but he gives you the opportunity until you take your last, last breath. So look, we're going to look at one last scripture here. So it's Matthew 22, 1 through 10. Okay. First verse says, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again. He did it by parable, right? That's the way Jesus talked to him, by parable. And he said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, listen, which had a marriage for his son. All right? So just, just to let you know, God is going to call us to the marriage of the Lamb. It's going to happen in the end, okay? So he's giving a parable to him. This is what's going to happen in the end. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden, right? Unto the wedding, and they would not come. Now, everyone, listen, the ones that he is calling to the wedding is the ones that knew the king. So that would be us that saved. We're saved, right? We know the king, right? And we were bid unto this wedding, but some people won't go to the wedding because they won't hear the king when he calls. God invites all, everybody, but we're so busy with our stuff. You know, God is offering you the greatest gift of eternal life, but you would not. A lot of people would not. They are Christian by name, by title, but they don't obey God. They don't do what God asks them to do. They don't do anything. But in the end, listen, he's going to call us to the, to the, to the, to the uh, wedding of, of, of Jesus, and we are supposed to be the bride. All right? The fourth verse says, again, he sent forth his servant, saying unto them, Tell them which are bidden, behold. He said, look, tell them. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. My goodness. See, he made everything ready. He said, but they made light of it. The fifth verse, they made light of it. And went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. See, they were too busy. They were too busy. They were just too busy. They didn't want to. They just didn't want to go. I'm too busy. You know, that's how, kind of how it is right now. You know, the, the table is spread every Sunday at church. The table is ready. The word has come, come forth to feed you. And a lot of people on Sunday, they're too busy. I'm going to go play golf. I'm going to go to my kid's soccer game. Go to my kid's football game. I'm going to cut the grass. I'm going to go jogging. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to do these things. But see, they too busy at the thing. Like these were, they were too busy, you know, to come. And he said, come, the table spread. Sixth verse says, and the remnant took his servant, the one that came and told him, and entreated him spitefully and slew him. They even killed this guy because they didn't want to go to a wedding. I thought everybody liked going to weddings. Weddings are joyful, free food. <laughs> you get some dancing, you have some fun, all right? But they didn't even want to do that. The seventh verse says, but when the king heard thereof, he was mad. Okay, he was wroth, he was mad. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those, those, and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Because he was upset at him. He said, I got everything ready for you. But that's how it's going to happen in the end. God going to have the table spread. Heaven is ready for folks. Folks don't even want to go to heaven. So this is what Jesus said. I mean, what God said or the king said. Then he said unto a servant. He said, the wedding is ready. But they which were bidden uh, were not worthy. They were not worthy because they didn't receive what the king wanted them to receive. They were not worthy. They didn't want to come. They, knew, they didn't want to do that. Right? Why? Because they turned away the great gift. Okay? They turned away this gift. And that gift we will receive is eternal life. They turn this away. So ninth verse, he said, go, there, go you therefore into the highways. And as many as you find, he said, bid them to the marriage. He said, go to just everybody. Don't, don't go to the ones that are supposed to be uh, uh, in my kingdom. Don't go to the ones that, you know, who are supposed to be saved. Don't go to them. Look, go out in the street. Go out to those that are homeless. Go out to those that are poor. Go after those that are just walking around, excuse me, and bid them to my marriage, okay? Now, one thing I do know, 
by being a pastor. Most of the time in church, you know what, when we have a, if we're going to have a prayer meeting, uh, I, tell, I tell everybody, hey, come on, we're going to go to prayer. You know, two or three people show up. It don't be a great number of people come to prayer. But if I say, hey, you come on, we're going to have some food, you know, while we have prayer. Well, you know what? They will invite their cousins, their aunts, their uncles, their next door neighbors, and folks they don't even know to come to church because of what? They're coming after the food, not the prayer. Okay? But the prayer was the most important thing. So it says, 10 verse says, so the servant went out into the highways. All right? And so he went out to the highways and he gathered together as many as they found. Okay? Both bad and good. Okay? And the wedding was furnished. All right? So everybody came. He was filled up with guests. Praise the Lord. So the wedding was furnished. <coughs> and that's the way the Lord is. You know, he gives opportunity to everyone. He gives everybody a chance to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior to come into his kingdom. He has a great kingdom that he wants to fill up with us. Praise the Lord. All we got to do is say yes to Jesus. You know, but I'm telling you, if you reject him and you push him off, you're not worthy. You're not worthy for it. So, praise the Lord, God will call those. He, he'll usually call those who are having difficult times in life, and they depend on the Lord. And these people are willing to come to the wedding. They're willing to come and enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, praise the Lord. So, I'll tell you what, God is so good. I mean, we've seen a couple of examples of what the kingdom of heaven is like. And I pray that you receive these things, you know, these words. Amen. You know, you can get this small thing. He does things small, you know, but it grows up to be large, you know. And, and like I say, there's a judgment to it when we disobey the Lord and not come unto the Lord. So right now, what you can do, if you are one of those that disobeyed, you can repent of your sins right now. You, you can bow your head right where you are and you can ask the Lord, say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I'm not going, I'm not going to do these things no more. And, uh, Father, forgive me of my sins, and I ask Jesus to come into my life. I'm going to, I'm going to honor Jesus, I'm going, to, I'm going to worship Jesus, and I'm going to follow Jesus' commands. And when you do that, you know, the Bible says, All heaven rejoice over one soul that gives their life unto the Lord. Because I'm telling you, God, he wants you to be in his kingdom. He don't want you to be over there with the enemy, the devil being tormented, being abused, and all that stuff. No, he wants you in his kingdom. All right? So... If you receive Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, as your Lord and Savior, turn to Satan and say, Satan, I denounce you. I denounce you. I renounce you. I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. And now I'm on team Jesus and I'm going to serve the Lord. All right. I tell you, praise the Lord. I tell you, the Bible says all heaven rejoices over one soul that give their life unto the Lord. And this is why we stand up on Sundays. This is why so many churches are preaching. We're trying to pull you out of the kingdom of darkness and bring you into the kingdom of light, where you have liberty, where you have freedom. And Jesus said he gives you abundant life. He gives you tremendous blessings. Amen. And all you got to do is say yes to Jesus. All right. So right now, bow your heads right now. Come on, talk to Jesus. And tell Jesus, say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. And Lord, even right now, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. Come with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Oh God, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. All right, well, praise the Lord. I tell you, I thank God for you. And we're going to have a little deliverance. And uh, we're going to do a little healing. But before I do that, I want to talk again about the anointing oil. It's free. All you got to do is email us at Healing Word Church, and it's free. I will send you this bottle of anointing oil. It's for your healing. It's for your body, for any sickness. And uh, I tell you, the Lord will bless you. It doesn't have any power in it. Like I say, it's just oil and uh, frankincense and myrrh. Uh, but it's, you, you use it by faith. And it says on here, use with your faith. <laughs> use with your faith. And let God do the work. Because in the Bible it says that you can anoint your head with oil. Let uh, 
the elders pray for you and you shall be healed. So rub it on your body in places that you hurt so that you will be healed. All right, well, praise the Lord. I'm going to take a little break here and for just a minute. And I'm going to come back and we're going to do some deliverance. God bless you. One break. When this word says yes, when it speaks to me, and over the ways I will speak peace. Lift up your eyes. Well, praise the Lord. Give God all the glory. Glad you're here for a deliverance. Uh, we're going to have a general deliverance today. Uh, so praise the Lord. And I tell you, deliverance is the children's bread. It is something that God uh, provided for us when we find ourselves entangled in some type of bondage from the enemy. Okay? You can be set free from that bondage in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So what it is, I'm, it's just general deliverance. I'm going to call out some spirits. And if you identify with any of these, I uh, want you to say out. Call the name of the spirit out and then blow out and command it out in the name of Jesus. Okay. So because uh, I mean, there's so many of them. I guess I could pick one or two and deal with it, you know, but you know what's going on with you. If you got some some um, hardship in your body or something that's going on, something that don't seem right something that seems to be blocking you, you can just call it out. Just call out what you think it is and command it to go, okay? All right, let's move on to deliverance. So I want to let you know you have to exhale, exhale. And when you do exhale, I want you to know that sometimes you will yawn, sometimes you will cough or have a violent cough, and sometimes you might even notice, not notice anything, okay? But you just exhale because that's how it comes out. It comes out through your mouth, your nose, any orifice that you have, okay? Out, okay? So we're going to command these demons out. All right. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask that you would bind every demon, that you would send your angels forth right now, and that you would bind every demon that I call out or that the people mention for themselves, Lord. Lord, let your, let your kingdom stand up and fight against the kingdom of darkness right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right. All right. We're going to bind the spirit of loneliness. Some people have a spirit of loneliness. So loneliness, I command you out of the people. Now, in the name of Jesus, loneliness, I command you to go. I command you to be bound in the name of Jesus. Uh, you try to draw them away. You try to make them not have any friends. And uh, you are lying spirit, spirit of lie. I command you out right now in the name of Jesus. Lying and loneliness, go in the name of Jesus. I command you to go right now. I command you to leave. I command you to be bound right now. Come on, y'all. Talk to us. Say, lying spirit out and then blow it out. Blow it out. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave God's people right now. I command you to go. I command you to go right now. Lying spirit, I command you to go. You stiff-necked spirit, you stubborn spirit, I command you to go. Out of the neck right now. Out of the neck. Out of the shoulders. Out! In the name of Jesus, you spirit of stiff-neckedness, go right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to be loosed out of them right now. Come on, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. I know it's trying to hang in there, but keep pressing. Out! In the name of Jesus, I command you to go right now. You spirit of stiff neckness, out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The spirit of confusion, to confuse the mind, I command you out right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. You spirit of confusion, out right now. Out, out, out. 
in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost be against you. The fire of God come against you right now. Confusion, go. Woo, hallelujah. Out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You spirit of insomnia. I command you to leave these people right now. You're trying to uh, drive them crazy with no sleep but insomnia. Go in the name of Jesus. I command insomnia to leave you right now. Come on, speak to us. Say, insomnia, go. Insomnia, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, command it out. Insomnia, go, 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 go. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, come on, give God praise. Come on. But you command those spirits out of you. You command it out of them. Command them to loose you right now. In the name of Jesus, command them to go. The spirit of homosexuality, out right now. You have a desire for some man or some woman or, or, or anything like that, masturbation, out. In the name of Jesus, I command you out of God's people. You spirit of perversion, go right now. You give them perverted thoughts. Go right now. Come on. Tell it to go right now. Tell it to go. Tell it to leave right now. In the name of Jesus, go. In the name of Jesus, go. Go, go. You spirit of perversion. You spirit of sex. Out right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you out of God's people. Well, praise the Lord. I tell you, God, be glorified. I tell you, he be magnified. Because uh, I tell you, he'll set you free. And some of you have been set free from this. And I tell you what, contact us. Let us know what God has done for you. Let us know about your deliverance. Let us know what then happened to you. Praise the Lord. So we can, we can send you some information to help you to uh, maintain this deliverance. We can help you to get through this. All right, because I'm telling you, these demons do not care for you. All they want to do is destroy you. They want you to be tormented. They want you to be everything, you know, that, that's against God. They don't want you to be happy. But you got to cast them out. They only can come by casting them out. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to take another little break. And then uh, we'll come back for healing. So I'll see you in just a minute. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. We're going to do some healing today. And like I said, we're going to do some general healing. So uh, praise the Lord. Amen. If you've got anything that's going on in your body, what I want you to do is put your hands on it. Whatever it is, whatever is going on, you know, in your body, we're going to pray for it. Okay? So that's what I want you to do. And you can, you can repeat the things that I'm saying, and we'll speak to those things. Because I need you to talk to it. I need you to talk to your body parts and tell it what to do. That's it. Talk to the body parts by faith. Tell it what to do. So if you do have some anointing oil, get your anointing oil out. Get your anointing oil out. And then what I want you to do is anoint those parts of your body, whatever it is that's bothering you, we're going to put some anointing oil on it by faith. Okay, we're doing this by faith, and God will heal you of this. The Bible says that he is a healer. God sent his word to heal us and to deliver us from all destruction. It also said that the stripes that when they whipped Jesus before he got on the cross, he said it was for our healing. It was for us to be healed. His blood was shed for our healing. So right now I plead the blood of Jesus over your body parts, those parts that are, that are uh, affected or, or something that's going on with your body. I plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. So lay your hands on whatever part of your body that is bothering you. And in the name of Jesus, I command that body part to heal right now. I command it to be miraculous right now. I command it to be restored right now in the name of Jesus. I command that body part to be made new, restored any injury, any damage, any cut, anything that happened to it be renewed right now in the name of Jesus. 
I command it to be healed. I command it to be whole right now in the name of Jesus. So put, it, put your hands over your body part, your knees, your back, your head, your ears, your eyes, your toes, your feet, your buttocks, whatever it is. Put your hand on it and ask the Lord right now. Say, Lord, heal me in Jesus' name. And then speak to it. Say, whatever body part it is, I command you in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be restored right now. If it's pain, command pain to go. Say, pain, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave right now. And command it. Be restored knee. Be restored eye. Be restored ear. Be restored intestines. Be restored heart. Be restored spine. Be restored feet. Whatever it is. Be restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I tell you, I give God all the glory. And I thank you for spending this time with me uh, this Sunday. And uh, I tell you, God got great things for you. He got great things for you. So praise the Lord. We got some uh, announcements coming up, information at the end, how you can get in touch with us. Please get in touch with us. Get your anointing on. Send us a prayer request. Give us a praise report. Uh, and if you would like to support, you can even support there too. And I tell you, till next time, I'm Pastor Andrew Alexander, the pastor of Healing Word Church in Bandera, Texas. And I will see you next week. God bless you.